The Americans were not in Italy to sightsee or romance or drink or otherwise have fun. They were there to engage the Germans in combat, not on the ground or at sea, but in the air. That gave them some privileges, such as cots to sleep on, hot, if not very good, food prepared by cooks, time off, faster promotions, and more. They were grateful that they were not in the infantry, sleeping in foxholes and being shot at, or in the navy, cooped up on a ship for interminable voyages, going wherever the captain directed, almost never seeing the enemy except in the air, yet still taking great risks that, when a ship got destroyed, led to the death by wounds or drowning of almost every one of their mates. Except for a tiny number of volunteers, no one wanted to be in a submarine. But it was the case in World War II that the U.S. servicemen in the Navy were glad they were where they were, instead of in a foxo or a bomber. While those in the infantry wanted no part of flying, they liked keeping their feet on the ground. Virtually every sailor or soldier shuddered at the thought of being in an airplane when it got hit by enemy fighters or flak. McGovern met two infantry officers after the war and said to them, Whenever I'd fly over you guys, I thought it must be terrible to be down there in the mud, hand-to-hand -hand fighting, all that shelling. And the infantryman told him, Seeing you guys overhead and the Germans shooting away at you, we thought you didn't have a chance if you take a direct hit. To McGovern's surprise, they were feeling sorry for us. For himself, McGovern said, I always knew that it would take infantry to win the war, but I always thought that the bombers and the fighter planes were essential too, that without those planes, the infantry could not prevail against the Germans.